Welcome to Jack's Conversations, um, the continuing series. And today, Conversations is with uh, Professor Laura Glagliardi of the University of Chicago. Uh, she's the Richard and Kathy Leventhal Professor of uh, Chemistry and Molecular Engineering. And uh, she's an associate editor, newly minted, um, with Jax. And um, I'll have the chance to um, ask her some questions and get her views on chemistry, life, and science um, in general. So welcome, uh, Laura. Thank you, Eric. So let me start out with a, a series of questions that are connected to each other. Um, I'd be curious to hear about your vision of chemistry and the field in particular, and that connected to how how chemistry can remain relevant um, now and into um, the future. So thank you, Eric. Thank you for having me here. It's uh, really a honor for me. And uh, uh, so a lot of questions. Well, um, chemistry for me is a really an amazing discipline. It's um, at the core of uh, all sciences, engineering, and uh, also what is fascinating for me is that one can embrace chemistry from uh, many different uh, perspectives. Uh, so chemistry is certainly relevant to all the the major challenges related to our planet, like global warming, for example, but also let's think about what has happened uh, in the last year, this pandemic. I mean, chemistry plays a fundamental role in understanding, uh, understanding COVID together, of course, uh, uh, with other sciences. And um, what, what I think is uh, fascinating about uh, chemistry is that um, uh, one can think uh, about it as um, the science in which uh, you make things, uh, like you make uh, new systems, you, you make, you study, you uh, design a new reaction, but also um, chemistry means understanding how things work by analytical means. And, um, and these two aspects um, are, are not uh, uh, mutually exclusive, exclusive, but for example, I think I belong to the group of people who like to understand things and uh, make them uh, uh, in a computer. Uh, so I, I I like um, 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 to, to sometimes I, I think some synthetic chemists um, are, are like um, chefs in the kitchen. They, they like to, to cook and to prepare things. I, I'm not a good cook. My husband is the cook who is an organic chemist by, by training. I like to understand and uh, sort of just um, taste of the good food. But uh, um, as a theoretical chemist, uh, I think uh, my role is really to um, understand things and especially it's an important uh, role uh, uh, in today's society because we can uh, explain phenomena and also being predictive. And I think this is really uh, the power of a computational and, uh, and theoretical uh, uh, chemists. But of course, uh, this has to be done within a context with uh, experimental chemists. So there has to be a, a sustained, a self-sustained loop between a theory and experiment. So I think what is important for theory is to try to give a plausible explanation given the model that one has set up and the, and the method that one is using and try to help with this explanation to understand what happens in the real world. It'd be nice if you could touch on the issue of, you know, sometimes chemistry seems awfully difficult to connect with the public. So despite the fact that it's a significant uh, central science uh, with solutions to very modern problems. So I wonder if you could comment. I mean, it's, uh, chemistry is a very technical field, so sometimes for the general public, uh, it's difficult to truly appreciate it, and maybe um, people connect chemistry with pollution, explosions. Uh, so um, we, we have a task, a challenging task. When I was in high school, I, I really loved chemistry because I mean, I, I was interested in many topics and I thought uh, chemistry embraced them all. So I, I thought it was really a very um, fascinating uh, um, discipline. And also what I really liked is the connection with the real world. So I think that we um, as a community have this responsibility to make chemistry more um, appreci appreciable to the general public. And so I think that uh, the ACS uh, is really trying hard to bring STEM to larger communities. I'm wondering, so what advice would you give to someone that's young and starting out who has their career ahead of them? Um, you know, academic or industrial career ahead of them. What advice would you give the young 
So uh, I say my, my advice is to um, uh, try to understand what uh, your real passion is. So really try to pursue a career in such a way that you can have an impact uh, in, in what you are doing. Uh, so care about your job and then say, OK, I have this passion. I am so excited about my job. How can I make a difference in the real world? And so we, as chemists, we, we really face these challenges that I mentioned before, like saving the planet or uh, curing uh, terrible diseases. And so we, we can contribute towards this mission in a meaningful way. Also, I think what is important is that we have to be more inclusive as a community. So try to share our knowledge, our passion, with as many people as possible. I also tell my students and my postdoc that uh, to achieve all these goals, um, uh, one has to be uh, the best in their field. So I tell them, really, try to excel, and uh, this implies um, many choices along your career, uh, have very high uh, ethics values, uh, and uh, always try to find the right answer for the right reason, so be committed to integrity in your work and also be very collaborative, very inclusive and respect each other. What was your experience as a young faculty? Um, and related to that, what do you think was critical to your success as a young academician, uh, slowly working your way uh, through the, the various hurdles and challenges that one has as a young academic? I, I mean, I... I am originally from Italy and I started my, my I did my studies in Italy and uh, I think um, Italian universities are excellent places where to get an education and um, so I think I had an excellent education uh, then I had the opportunity to be interviewed for a faculty position in, in Switzerland so I started my career in Italy as an assistant professor then I I got this job offer in Switzerland in 2005 and I accepted it and I moved to the University of Geneva and this was really important for my career because there I had um, um, more opportunities to, to do excellent uh, research. In 2009 I moved to the United States and of course it was a, a bold move on my side because I'd, um, I'd, I'd not uh, had an education in the US. I didn't really know how for example the, the funding system works in the US and how one can be successful in this country. I was uh, surrounded by excellent colleagues, uh, students, um, and postdocs. So in a way, I think that um, it was a series of coincidences. But um, also what I think was important for me is that uh, I studied my PhD I did my PhD on um, high-level um, theoretical methods, so-called uh, CI methods. And uh, I think it was important to learn about uh, the, the rigor, the, 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 the fact that these methods are very systematic. But then, I, I mean, I was studying uh, very uh, boring, uh, quotation mark, chemical systems. And so I remember then once I, I went to a, a summer school, a, the European summer school in quantum chemistry in, uh, in Sweden, and I met there the late Bjorn Roos, who has been an, an important mentor in for me. And he told me, okay, these methods are very rigorous, but you are studying such boring molecules. These have been studied 20 years ago. And I I took this criticism in a constructive way. So I, um, I learned, I mean, I tried to apply these uh, methodologies uh, to more meaningful uh, chemical systems. And then I went to England as a postdoc and I worked on actinides. And nowadays I'm working on um, more, uh, let's say, extended materials uh, relevant to sustainable energies like metal organic frameworks, uh, photovoltaic materials. And what I, so what I, I try to um, learn from each of these experiences and uh, for example, try to apply the same level of rigor uh, that I used to apply as a PhD in these totally boring molecules to these more relevant uh, systems. I'm uh, fundamentally curious and not scared of the novelty, so I'm happy to embrace a new topic in my research. And this has to be done in a very humble way because at the beginning, I don't know anything about the topic and I try to become an expert. And so I think this um, aspect have helped me being successful and uh, what is uh, 
perhaps the most important thing is that uh, my research is highly collaborative. So I work together with uh, a lot of experimentalists, for example, and sometimes I sit in a meeting and say, oh my God, I have no idea what this experiment, how it's done, it's so complicated, but I try to, to learn as much as possible from them and uh, try to, on my side, uh, produce something that is meaningful to them. And so being surrounded by so many excellent colleagues, uh, both experimentalists and theorists and uh, students and postdocs uh, has, re has been really important for me. Wow, that's a great answer. I mean, it's clear from your, your passion that comes across loud and clear that uh, you're a great mentor and certainly a great role model uh, to both the undergraduates and the graduate students that you encounter um, in the courses that you teach and of course in the um, experimental laboratory. I'm curious, um, what advice would you give a, an individual, a young individual who's charting out their 30, 40 year ca career ahead of them? What advice would you give them in terms of things to avoid? So I, I would say, um, remember that your goal is uh, to try to find the, the right answer for the right reason. And uh, this sentence uh, um, is a quotation from uh, Ernest Davidson, who, I, I mean, really said it about quantum chemistry. So don't just try to, to, for example, agree with experiment, really try to understand why this is your answer. And so this also means being really committed to uh, integrity, following ethical uh, practices. And sometimes, I mean, um, of course, the young generations, they are uh, worried about their career, their future steps in their career. And so uh, one uh, question that they always ask me, uh, can we, which journal are we going to publish uh, this article in? And I, I always tell them, don't worry about it. Don't uh, think about the journal. Now focus about what is in your paper. And uh, if the science is solid, uh, it doesn't matter in which journal it will be published. It, uh, um, the, the world will know about it and uh, um, you will be known for that and you will be respected for that. If um, we can now uh, sort of address some um, questions concerning your role as an associate editor in JAX, I'd like to start off by asking you, as an author, first of all, what's your favorite publication from your group that uh, that, was, that appeared in JAX? I mean, I, I have published various papers, uh, and some of them really are representative of different steps in my career. But I think uh, uh, one of the papers that excites me more is a recent one, and probably one of the reasons is also because it's so recent. And uh, it's a um, collaboration with uh, my colleague, Don Truller at the University of Minnesota, and uh, one of my students who now graduated, Prachi Sharma. And uh, the title of this paper is, uh, uh, I have to read it, Magnetic Coupling in a um, Chromium Dimer Compound, uh, which occurs through ligand-mediated super exchange uh, in conjunction Junction with through space coupling. And what I really like about this uh, paper is that uh, it addresses a very important uh, uh, topic, especially nowadays it's relevant to um, quantum computers, so magnetic system, molecular magnetic systems uh, that could be used uh, to, to build uh, superior qubits for quantum computers. And we have studied this system with a state-of-the-art method that we have developed uh, in our groups, uh, multi-configuration pair density functional theory and this method for the first time um, has shown that we can describe the, the exchange mechanism in a qualitative and quantitative way uh, correctly so it's really exciting because of the chemical problem and the advance in methodology i would add i also think it's great that you the it's the most recent paper of yours that you're most excited about that I think um, says a lot about you in terms of uh, staying uh, at the forefront of the discipline and, and constantly pushing yourself, as, as all great scientists do. Um, I'm curious now about your role as an associate editor. Um, what, what do you think JAX has done well um, in the past? What could it do better? And how can you have an impact in, in making that happen? So I think uh, JAX is a really an incredible journal, both in terms of the breadth of the topics and the quality of the work that is published. Uh, as a theorist, as a computational chemist, of course, my, my heart is close to theory. And uh, I think in the past, uh, the um, attitude towards theory of JAX has been a little ambiguous. And uh, I think on the other hand, theory is very important and I'm super excited 
to work with you, Eric, because I, I know that you really value the role of theory. So I think uh, um, uh, JAXA can embrace this challenge of bringing theory to, to the community, but uh, I also think it, it has to be done in the right way, because uh, sometimes, I mean, th people think that just if you, if you run a calculation, like really checking a box in the manuscript, that's uh, the role of theory. And I don't think this is the case, because again, the role is not just to say, okay, the theory confirms the experiment. Theory agrees in an excellent way with the experiment. No, it has to explain something, go beyond what is obvious, so add really something in terms of advancing the knowledge. And at the same time, I mean, maybe one should think, which method should I use? Should I just use a routine, out-of-the-shelf methods, or should I try to use something more advanced? So the important is not just say, oh, I use this method, it's everybody else uses it. One has to really uh, compare methods uh, and make sure that, again, as I said before, one gets the right answer for the right reason. So um, high-level methodology and really advancing the, the chemistry, these are are the two criteria, according to me, um, with which one should judge whether a paper is appropriate or not for the journal. I think probably if I had had um, uh, instructors such as you in theory, who knows, maybe I, whom you said was more, more of a cook than anything, might even, might even be okay at doing theory. And maybe I could be a good uh, organic chemist if I had you as my teacher. <laughs> 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 Okay, I think I'll be contacting you in, for collaborations in the future. Okay. Um, I look forward to that. Um, let me thank you for taking time to do this uh, interview. I think the um, readership and the community at large will uh, appreciate getting to know you better, uh, both as a scientist um, and as an associate editor, um, and uh, sort of the information that you provided today in terms of your vision for the discipline um, and how we can be better um, at doing our jobs as scientists and educators, uh, authors, readers, um, and editors. Thank you very much, Eric. Uh, it was a pleasure to have this conversation with you, and uh, I'm really excited about uh, uh, being on this journey with you uh, for the journal. The pleasure is mine.